continuing in week 9, PSMN 511 Pastoral Ministry. This is the second lesson for this week. The last lesson was on infant dedications from lesson 15 uh, from Sheeler's uh, book on pastoral ministry. This is lesson 16 in the uh, student guide on premarital counseling.
I want to ask, have you, have you asked or have you told both sets of parents? And I think it's good for a young man to, to go to the parents of the bride, the would-be bride, and, uh, and just say, you know, I'd like to ask your permission. Now, sometimes a dad may say no, but that, that can't actually stop them from getting married. But um, it honors the parents to, to at least ask. And again, the question, what did they say when you asked them? What kinds of activities have you been involved in on your dates? What do you guys do when you go out? Where do you go? Has God been a part of your relationship? Do you attend church together? Do you worship together? Do, are you of the same faith? How intimate have you been in your relationship? I had um, people come to me early on in ministry. I was probably more rigid on these issues than I have become later in life. So if I had a couple that were living together and they wanted to get married, I would tell them that they needed to um, they needed to stop living together until the wedding date. And um, sometimes that would be all it took for them to say, well, we'll find somebody else to marry us. And, uh, and I'd say, you know, well, my blessings are with you and I pray that you get married. But I was very strict. Later in life, I, I began to realize that sometimes I had couples that had been together for years, had children, and now they wanted to commit to to marriage. And I felt like helping them make that step would also help help them make a commitment to the Lord, and which which usually it did actually. Um, so again, these are questions you have to answer for yourself, and uh, in consultation with. Uh, Again, your church board or your denomination. A question you might ask, why do you believe that you're to marry this person? Why do you believe that this is the person God wants you to marry? Again, these are just helps them think and process and slow down and not let their emotions or their passions drive them into something that they're going to regret later. And it's, it's much better to ask the difficult questions before they get married than it is afterward. What do you feel you have to bring into this relationship? What do you bring? Is it your your faith? Your There's certain things you need to plan to do with respect to premarital counseling and planning for the wedding. Number one, make a checklist for the couple to work through prior to their approval or prior to you approving to do the wedding. So certain things you want them to attend to and to think about. Talk to other leaders who may know them better than you. And just ask, you know, how long have you known them? And um, do they are they a good couple? I remember one couple that, um, that were dating for, oh, several months, maybe as much as a year. But it seemed like, that they were always arguing and they were dating. And if you think about it, most people when they're dating are putting on their best, uh, their best face. They're trying to look as good as they can to the other person to, uh, to convince them to marry them. And if when they're putting on their best face, they're arguing rather consistently, that's not a good sign. And uh, in this case, I brought it to their attention and ultimately they decided not to marry and um, one of them ultimately married a, a young man and and uh, they both have children or they have children now. Want to set a date for the wedding? When, when are you thinking about getting married? Have you agreed to this date? Have you talked to your family about it? And then also to set up the first premarital counseling. So at this point, you've agreed to perform the wedding. Uh, you've asked the questions, you've talked to them, you've had that initial kind of understanding of where they are and you feel comfortable based upon your own convictions about how you handle weddings or again your church or your denomination and this is something that you can do and so now you set the date and you set up the first marriage counseling session. You want to inform them of pertinent state laws relating to marriage and marriage license. Uh, some people don't know, you know, to go to the county courthouse to get the license. Um, I don't know what they cost, but I would tell them there is a cost involved in getting a license. And that in our county, at least, there's also a discount uh, once they get the premarital counseling. And so I 
will usually write a letter for them, or actually the associate pastor will write a letter for them affirming that they've gone through the marriage counseling and help them or send them to a designated wedding coordinator to help them with their wedding preparation. I never presume to try to help anybody set up their wedding. Uh, on the night of the rehearsal, and I always insist on a rehearsal, it really helps you iron out the, um, the potential problems or uh, the way things will go. So I, um, I don't do that. Now I may walk them through it, I may give them suggestions and tell them what I've done in other weddings, but I always make it clear this is your wedding. As long as we cover the fundamental things here, these exchange of vows and rings, um, how you, the music you play, if you want someone to sing, um, that's all up to you. The last wedding I did, it's kind of interesting, that's for my cousin's daughter actually, they did a, um, they did communion, they did, they put a prayer shawl over their shoulders and had their parents come up and pray with them. They had uh, several ministers who were in the congregation that had been important in their lives come up and pray over them. And then at the end, they asked me to blow the shofar, which um, <laughs> which can be challenging sometimes. But uh, we did all of that. It was their wedding. It actually turned out quite nice. The rehearsal was kind of um, iffy. You kind of wondered if this was all going to come together. But like I tell them, the people in the congregation don't know if there's a mistake. They assume whatever happens is intended to happen. So you just press forward and um, and it's going to come off well. And it did. It was actually a very, very nice wedding. There's a questionnaire that uh, Bill Sheeler has available. And it's a pretty good one. You can look up uh, others online, do your research. There are books that have those that come along with certain courses for premarital counseling that you can buy the curricula for this. Um, and But the questionnaire is pretty important. And I always have the couples fill these out uh, before I do the wedding so that I can learn some more about them. And the questionnaire helps me then prepare for the kind of counseling that I would be doing. So once they've completed it, you want to read it carefully. You want to mark areas of concern that, that you'd like to discuss with them further. You want to compare each of their completed questionnaires and note areas uh, where expectations or information differs. And I always ask them to fill them out separately. Don't sit together and try to, um, to uh, match your answers because that's, that doesn't help you. You want to know up front what your different expectations are. So if you if you put on the questionnaire, uh, would you like to have children? And one says yes and the other says no. I think that's an important point to bring out. Um, some people will have them fill them out together so they can ask these questions. And um, you can actually do it uh, one of two ways. There are some questionnaires you might give out and say, this portion I need you to, to fill out together, come to agreement on. And then there might be another portion of the questionnaire that they complete separately so that you can see where their expectations may differ. So there, again, there are different approaches to this, but a questionnaire is very important. Um, set an agenda of areas to cover in counseling sessions based on, again, the questionnaire. And then you want to give their questionnaires back to them so they can have those and they can refer to those and, well, they can throw them away if they want, but it does provide uh, 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 some memorabilia for them and they look back and uh, celebrate their wedding and their life together. When it comes to the counseling sessions, you need to decide on and agree to the number of sessions. Uh, will be determined in part by the evaluation of the questionnaire, typically three to five sessions. If you're using pre-prepared curriculum, of course, the curriculum will determine how many sessions. Uh, then you want to determine the frequency. You're going to meet every two weeks, every month, and part of that's going to be determined by when the date of the wedding is. I want to talk about the, the content of the sessions. There should be discussions on several things that are important to, to marriage, communication, spiritual life together, individually and together, their priorities, what's most important. Uh, for some, it may be their careers. For some, it may be family. So these are issues to discuss their goals, their long-term goals, their vocation, 
Are they in school? Are they planning on something uh, different than what they're doing now? Again, children, do they want to have children? Have they talked about how many children they might like to have? Uh, the birth control that they might use in the interim? Um, how involved they're going to be in church and ministry? Um, sex, and again, this is an area I really don't delve too <laughs> deeply into it. Um, some pastors or counselors, I guess, would deal with it more thoroughly than probably I do. I do know I had a couple once that uh, she actually had a child and had been sexually active before she became a believer. He had been, um, he was into his 30s and he'd never, never been with a woman. He had maintained his purity. And so just very briefly, I uh, explained to them that probably the most important thing to remember in terms of their their sex life together was to communicate to one another. Both should have a goal of pleasing the other and just being honest and saying, you know, I like this or I don't like that and just, just talk and, and let the other person know um, what's going to be um, gratifying for, for them. Money. Money is a big issue. And I'll tell you, uh, sex is also a big issue as well. Their expectations can be quite um, different. I had a friend whose daughter married a young man. They met in church, supposedly, and she was pure. She'd never been with another man. He had been apparently very involved in pornography and had certain expectations uh, based on pornographic imagery and movies and videos. And so their first night together, here's a girl that's never been with a man, their first night together, he intends to engage in all kinds of, of fantasies based upon pornography. And it, it, it was terrifying for her. And in fact, after that first night, she left him and uh, she uh, divorced him. She never went back to him because it was so, in her mind, vulgar. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't sacred. It was, it was him acting out fantasies. So again, that's it can be a very important um, thing to discuss, to do it tactfully, and to and to help them have shared understandings about it. Again, money, uh, credit, credit scores. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be bold enough, but you might ask each person if they can show their potential spouse their credit score. Uh, it could be a deal breaker for some, but I think you need to know if the person you're marrying may damage, actually damage your credit. Um, their thoughts on buying a home. Have they saved anything? Have they thought about where they might like to live in the country? Are they thinking about moving? Lots of things to deal with. Uh, their friendships, what kind of time they spend with their friends, how important the friendships are. Um, Friends at your home? Are you going to go out without your spouse to visit friends? Lots of different questions there. How they solve conflicts, and there are different um, conflict models, conflict re resolution models you might want to um, make them aware of. The idea of leadership and submission from a biblical perspective. Again, the Bible addresses this, and you might refer them to those Bible verses and tell them they're going to have to work out the implications of the Bible verses in their own marriage. And relatives, in-laws, can be a big issue. I had a couple uh, in, in the church several years ago, their son got married, um, but they were very, tried to remain very involved in their son's life. And uh, his young bride came to me on more than one occasion to say that she just felt like that his parents were too involved in his life, that they couldn't make a decision as a couple without him deferring to his parents. And after about two years, they, they did get a divorce. You might want to give them some special homework to do as a couple. And uh, Scheidler, Scheidler <laughs> um, recommends that the bride and groom speak to an older uh, married a person who's been married, they may be widowed at this point, someone who had a successful marriage, and it could be a couple, an older couple that's been married for many years. And so the bride would speak to the to the older woman and the man would the groom would speak with the older married man. And there should be someone in the church, preferably someone that you're familiar with and you know that they've had or have a good marriage. 
and that they have a successful marriage and therefore have something of importance to share with the younger couple. You might supply the couple with some questions to ask the older persons. Uh, for example, what has allowed your marriage to work? What do you think made it work for this many years? What have you personally done to help the marriage? What did you do? What did you changes did you have to make? Um, how have you handled difficulties or conflict in your marriage? Uh, what did you do when the going got tough? When you really had some major issues you had to face, how did you get through it? As you look back over the last 50 years, or however many years of their marriage it may have been, what times were the hardest to get through? What advice would you give someone like me? A question I think I would always ask is, if you could go back and talk to your younger self, what advice would you have given yourself before you got married? And so now the couple, uh, the young couple that's planning to get married, should come back and um, report about the interview, what they learned, what was helpful. Then there's planning the ceremony. You can be a resource person in relation to the ceremony, um, but again, that's up to you how involved you want to get. Sometimes pastors' wives take on that role. Um, my wife has never... I've never obligated her to that. Sometimes she will volunteer, but typically we we encourage them to find someone else, uh, their family member or a professional. And you might want to have some names of some wedding coordinators that you could refer them to. Uh, you need to let them know this is going to be a tense time. It's nervous for them. And uh, sometimes, again, when you're practicing, I've seen practices very tense and people kind of snapping at each other because for a um, typically for a young woman, this is something she's thought about most of her life and she's seen all these pictures. Sometimes, you know, they have magazines, bridal magazine where they lay out the perfect wedding and all of this. And so they're, they're very tense about it. Uh, often young men aren't quite as tense. I mean, they're nervous about getting married, but they're not so concerned about everything going perfectly. Um, help them make it a meaningful time. Tell them to take, slow down. Absorb what's happening. Commit it to memory. Remember what it felt like on this day and when you first got married. Because sometimes it can really go go by, as we say, like a blur, and you don't even remember much of what happened. So you got to help them remember. Take a breath. Think about it. Absorb what's going on. As a pastor, you want to be prompt in all of your areas of responsibility, and you want to ask them to be on time. I've had weddings that have started 30, 40, an hour later than it was scheduled. And uh, it, in one case, it was a small church and we had 200 people packed in there. And it, uh, the air conditioner wasn't able to keep up. It got very hot and it was just uncomfortable. Um, so you really want to encourage them to be on time. And, and as a pastor, you want to make sure you're there on time. Know where you're going to be. If it's not going to be at your church, make sure you have the address. Make sure you can get there on time. You definitely don't want to be late for somebody's wedding that you're supposed to be officiating. Again, the young woman's probably had dreams about the wedding. And so when the bride and the groom kind of have a differ, uh, different thought about how something should happen in the wedding, you, as a pastor, you might want to encourage the groom to... Uh, you know, to let the bride's vision of how this wedding's going to go uh, kind of take precedence. But again, if he has a great idea, you you might want to bring that to her attention as well. You you really don't want to get in the middle of the conflict. But um, when it comes down to two equal ideas, you might want to push in the direction of the of the bride. You want to be sensitive to the relatives and extend pastoral ministry to them. So I mean. Uh, the bride or the groom's parents sometimes are nervous or sad or happy <laughs> at all at the same time and just be there to encourage them as well. Finally, review the uh, questionnaire that uh, Scheidler has prepared for you. It's, it's a good one. And you can also find and do some research to find your own or develop your own.
again, you want to be familiar with any guidelines and requirements uh, by your licensing agency or your local church. Again, it's a, it's a sacred thing to be involved in with a young couple beginning their life together. And so we want to express and reinforce the sacredness of the moment.